Hello, and welcome once again to Home Bible Study, from my home to your home. This is Robert Haller thanking you for taking the time to observe this video. And always to those that subscribe, you comment and respond. Today's topic, Satan's Gender and Sex Exploitation of Children. Now, this is a topic that needs to be exposed from a biblical standpoint. This is something that is very rampant in our society today. It is something, ladies and gentlemen, that your government, your elected officials are pushing for to be part of their educational system starting out at a very young age when children were in the past considered of the innocent age. Now, what better way to bring down a civilization in the many aspects and many ways that there is in this cursed and sinful world to bring down a civilization, one way that avoids wars, avoids economic sanctions, avoids uh, uh, the taking away of the um, health systems, the food supply. There's something else Satan is busy doing, and that's attacking it through the children, the innocent here, the total innocence of children where these other entities have nothing to do with it, but he's going after the humanity of it. And this is what needs to be exposed and needs to be stopped. However, why would one make a Bible study video on something like this? Well, it's because of the war that not only I personally, but I'm sure many others have waged not only against Christianity, but against the world. And here's why, scripturally speaking. If you take your Bibles and open them up to the book of Ephesians, ladies and gentlemen, chapter 6. I'm going to read you verses 10, 11, and 12 of chapter 6. Verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Verse 12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now this covers the war against Satan, against the powers, the satanic powers, the rules of the darkness of this world are those that push his agenda. These are your elected governmental leaders, ladies and gentlemen, your people in high places of social standings, of influence. This is the war against them and Satan for what they're pushing. Because there's a stern warning in Scripture from Jesus Christ himself personally. This happens to be in the Old Testament in the book of Luke. But it is apropos to be carried on through not only the times past, also in the but now of the cross, in the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in today, and also in the ages to come. What is that verse? Well, I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Luke, ladies and gentlemen. And here Jesus is talking about forgiveness, but he's talking about something that probably wouldn't be forgiven. Because let's start in verse 1 of chapter 17. Of the book of Luke. And then he, 
Then said he unto his disciples, this is Jesus Christ talking to his 12 disciples or apostles, it is impossible that an offense will come. It is impossible, but that offenses will come. So he's telling them already, these things that you see today, this gender education and exploitation of children at a very young age, you shouldn't be surprised that it came. Offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. Now, I tell you, there isn't a government official out there that is in whatever party that they affiliate themselves with and the ideologies that they have, grotesque as they are in the realm of the humanist, pushing this gender identity, sex education, exploitation of very young children. I'm talking two to four, five years old, ladies and gentlemen. This is what he's talking, and they don't realize woe unto them that push this agenda. Because look what it says, and look what he says in verse 2. It, it were better for him, that is, those people that push this sex, gender, identity, and exploitation of children, that a millstone hung about his neck, and he cast was cast into the sea, than he that should offend one of these little ones. That's what's awaiting these people. Very powerful. And yet you see it all over the place. And the reason I'm making this video, mark my words, ladies and gentlemen, I am not a prophet. I look at history. I understand the fall of mankind. I understand why mankind does what he does. I can understand from scripture why these people are doing what it is they do. It's from the fall of mankind in Genesis chapter 3. They think they're their own gods. They think they can handle good and evil. They know the difference between good and evil, but they don't realize they cannot control it, see, because they are under sin. They're born without the Spirit of God in them. So that is why they do what they do, because they are of the natural man. The natural man cannot perceive the things of the Spirit of God because they are foolishness unto him. He cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned to them. And these people that are pushing this agenda of Satan, by the way, is that they are lost. Because we said that in many videos, and I'll keep repeating it so that you'll understand and you will remember it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, Verses 3 and 4. And let's just read them from Scripture together. Open your Bibles to the chapter of 2 Corinthians, chapter 4. And this is what it says, starting in verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Verse 4. In whom the God of this world, which we know is Satan, has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, should, who is the image of God, should shine upon them. And we know these people are lost. So if these people are lost, they are definitely held captive by Satan himself. That is the only way one can actually understand and to let Scripture explain to you why these people do what it is they do. And why it is these people believe what it is they believe, no matter how heinous it might appear unto you. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 25 and 26. Chapter 2, verse 25 of 2 Timothy says this, In meekness and strictness, though, those that oppose themselves. These people are opposing themselves and they don't even realize it. If God preadventure would give them repentance unto the acknowledging of the truth. So verse 26, that they, these people that oppose themselves, may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are taken captive by him at his will. That is why we war against principalities and powers and the dark rulers of darkness of this world and 
the spiritual wickedness in high places, ladies and gentlemen. That is what's at work here. And like I said, mark my words. I am not a prophet, but after you view this video, keep in mind, this is going to infiltrate into the religion of Christianity. You doubt me, that's fine. Give it time. Satan has a limited time. But he wants you to think we have all the time in the world. So he will bite his time. He will continue to shine as the angel of light in your Christianity religion, posing as a Jesus Christ of Christianity and having all of his Christian ministers who are the ministers of his righteousness. And they pose as ministers of righteousness of Jesus Christ, of course, will start to promote this. As outlandish as you think that statement is, give it time. You have already churches that are for gay people. We covered this in a previous video. You have people that accept people into your denomination, your local church, your religion of Christianity, hoping to save them. But you don't want to hear what it is they do behind closed doors or what it is they stand for. But in time, Christianity will adopt this trans, this movement of sex education and gender, gender identity and the exploitation of children within their churches. Because, ladies and gentlemen, Christianity is a religion of this world. Christianity is a man-founded religion. Christianity is based on the formation of the great lie of Satan since the cross of Jesus Christ. And it's been around for millenniums already. It is, again, I always tell you, it is the largest religion in the world, the most powerful and the most richest. So it's not going to stop because a few people go against what it is the world trending to be. And again, that is the easiest and most subtle way to bring down an entire civilization. And it's working. It's working right before your very eyes. And, and, you, and it's, it's vanity to listen to what the people are saying and doing that are against it. Because they are going strictly against the flesh. They are speaking out. They are doing videos. They're having seminars. They're having movements against this in the vanity of the flesh. Because they think they can only see of the flesh and react to the flesh because that's what it's affecting is the flesh. They don't realize the spiritual wickedness and the rulers of the darkness and the principalities that are all behind this are ruled by a spiritual being, by a spiritual entity that has the powers way beyond the flesh. It is the powers of something that is absolutely and infallibly evil. There's no good about this entity. There's no good and evil in Satan. There's only evil. And that is what's controlling it. The people that, quote, draw the line and make, take a stand think they're putting the good against the evil because they want to stand for the good. Well, they're standing for the good that's in them of the knowledge of good and evil, which was given to them under sin. They'll never win. They may thwart it for a little while, quiet it down, slow it down. They will not destroy it, neither will they defeat it. They may suppress it for a little while, but then it'll come back. And every time it comes back, it comes back stronger. Why? Because the more times you tell a lie and keep the lie consistent and keep introducing it over and over and over again, people in their natural state, in the humanity of people, that have the knowledge of good and evil in them and don't realize what it really is, 
will succumb eventually to the great lie of the evil that is always being presented. People talk about in the Bible, and the Bible does state that there will be a coming time when evil is considered good and good is considered evil. But it covers a vast array of things. This is one of them. The evil you think it is of now will later on become a good, and it'll become acceptable, and it'll become part of the civilization. Mark my words, you think I'm crazy. You think I'm talking out of my butt. Go ahead. I can guarantee you from the word of God that is going to happen. And it is happening already. And it's going to increase. Are you going to take a stand? See, that's the thing. You professing Christians that have Christianity as your religion, you that follow the Jesus Christ of Christianity, you that belong to a Christian church, are you going to take a stand to fight against this spiritual wickedness, the principalities and the rulers of the darkness of the world and the spiritual wickedness in high places? Are you going to take a stand where it may cost you not only your standing within your Christianity, but your life? Because it's about the ramifications in the long run. It isn't about the here and now. And Satan loves to have you <clears throat> involved in the here and now, in the temporary fleshly things of life, because that is where the vanity is. He knows it. He doesn't want you to know it. The Vanity of Vanities, ladies and gentlemen. There's a great movie out I would have you watch if you want. It's called The Devil's Advocate. And in there, it was very interesting because Satan himself was, was portrayed by an actor, Al Pacino. He said, vanity is my favorite sin. And when you think about it, that deals with the here and now. Everything that mankind puts their efforts into, to what they think they're fighting the evil with their good, is going to be vanity. Just like fighting this gender identification, sex, exploitation of children, young children, that you deem so heinous, you can't even imagine that it's coming down the pike. When it's coming down the pike faster than a tsunami, which travels roughly around 500 miles an hour. And that is the most powerful entity on this earth. This sex education, gender identification, exploitation of children is the tsunami of Satan to destroy civilization, as you and I know it. And it's going against all the teachings of God, whether it's Jesus Christ on his earthly ministry, or it's Jesus Christ in the revelation of the ministry, of the mystery of Jesus Christ that he gave to Paul in Paul's gospel, in the revelation of the mystery of Jesus Christ, which is in the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in today, which is a doctrine for the body of Christ church. We have to take a stand. Anybody that says, well, it's a movement, it's going to dissipate, we just have to ride it out, it's not really affecting me right now, so... I'm not going to worry about it. I have no children. Uh, my children are grown, and it's not going to affect them. Let's just hope that this goes away. Well, it's not going to go away. It is permeating slowly, as the leaven does in the dough. It'll completely submerge itself into every aspect of it. You cannot escape it. And the reason you cannot escape it, it is planted as a seed in the very, very young. And you're allowing it. Yes, you are. Your government officials that you elected, apart from the spirituality of things, is pushing this agenda. They want it. Because they see the vanity of it. They see the power that's in them. 
And power is a very dangerous thing, ladies and gentlemen, because power excites the sense in the human being that lights the fuse of the knowledge of good and evil. And then it'll eventually, the fuse comes to the bottom, it'll explode because then they will be as gods. They will believe they can be as gods, making these decisions that affect human life and death. And they start very, very slowly and at the bottom and work their way up. And that's what's happening in this world today. That's what's happening with the sex exploitation and gender training and sex education of very young children. You have to attack it from a biblical standpoint because to understand why this is happening, <coughs> it is happening because of a biblical sense. And the Bible warns us about it. Because look what it says in the book of Timothy, ladies and gentlemen. Well, first of all, I'm going to read you the book of Romans. We covered this in the video I did when uh, I went against the LGBTQ plus movement. I read to you what happens to people in the book of Romans when God gives them over to a reprobate mind. You don't think God gave, is giving these people over to a reprobate mind that are pushing this entity? Well, this is what happens. And, this, and, and you look at it and you see and you can pick out a lot of things he's talking about in this scripture that is going on today. And let's start in the book of Romans again. We'll repeat it. And we're going to start again in verse 21 this time. Chapter 1, verse 21 says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. 22. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Verse 23. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to a corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creepy things. Verse 24, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Verse 25, Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 26, For this cause God gave them up to vile affections. For even their women did change the unnatural use unto that which is against nature. And verse 27, And likewise also the men having the natural use, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust towards one another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meet or made necessary. Verse 28, even they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Here they are, verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispering. Verse 30, backbiters, haters of God, deceitful, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. Verse 31, without understanding, covetous covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Verse 32, who, knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do these things the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. But let's continue on because you need to see more scripture. Let's go to 1 Timothy, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to open our books at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressedly in the latter times which we are in now. Many shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, the war against the spirituality in high places. Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Look at verse 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared, 
with a hot iron. That's a reprobate mind, ladies and gentlemen, by the way. And look what he says in 2 Timothy. And let's start in 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1. 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1 says, Know this also, that in the last days perilous times shall come. Verse 2, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy. See any of that these days? Verse 3, without natural affection, truth bakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Verse 4, traitors, heidi, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God. And verse 5, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. That is what's coming to Christianity and their religion and your religion as you Christians profess your religion of Christianity, saying you're a Christian. This will come into your church, and this will be a part of your religion. Mark my words. That's what's coming down the pike. Can you take a stand against this? Absolutely. But that's an, up to you whether you want to believe what you just read and what is being presented in this video. What is being presented in this video is absolutely from the powers of darkness, the rulers of the darkness of this world, the principalities, and the spiritual wickedness in high places. You see it every day. It's being exposed to you. But can you see it? You realize what you're fighting against. If you're fighting the flesh and blood, which the Bible says that we war not against, then it's vanity what you're doing. It's vanity, ladies and gentlemen, to take a stand the way you're taking a stand. You fight it with the armor of God, the word of God, which is the sword of the spirit of God. That is your weapon. The other ones are all defensive. The armor of God, do you realize that? You have one weapon. That is the word of God. In truth, that is the only hope we have. And that is the only tool that Jesus Christ gives us. That's the only tool tool we really need because he will win this battle he will win this war we are his soldiers we don't get involved in the things of this world but these things that are happening today are not only of this world because they carry eternal consequences ladies and gentlemen and if it goes into the eternal realm of things it goes into the spirituality of things yes those things we must fight against and get involved in because we are soldiers for Jesus Christ. We are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. We are evangelists for Jesus Christ. Those of us that are saints, that are saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery, which is Paul's gospel, where we are saved by grace through faith. From Romans to Philemon. Not of Christianity. Not of the religion of Christianity, not as professing Christians, not as those Christians that follow the Jesus Christ of Christianity. You are powerless against this because this entity is part of your religion. You just don't see it yet, but it's there. And when it comes to fruition, I may not be here, but I guarantee you a video like this will be shown to you somewhere in the realm of existence, that you've been warned about this kind of thing. You take heed to what it is you want to believe. I don't care what you want to believe. It makes no never mind to me. You're being warned. You're being shown. What you do with this is entirely up to you. But always remember, your choice is going to have not only temporary, but eternal consequences. You want to deny the fact that it will not infiltrate Christianity as your religion and that Jesus Christ of your Christianity will be promoting this down the road? You are ministers of righteousness, which is of Satan, who is your angel of light, will be promoting this down the road? Then you're believing the great lie that Satan has you under. Because you can't see under the surface of what he's telling you is a truth. It's a pseudo-truth. Just like he told the woman in the garden. He's telling you now. 
through your religion of all things. Because if you take a stand and you remain in Christianity, you're going to find out something in the long run. You took the wrong stand. You didn't fight the principalities and the rulers of darkness of this world and their spiritual wickedness in high places. You went right along with them because you fought the flesh and blood of the natural man. And you fought the evils of this world. Did you not? And it's all vanity. And it's going to be vanity. Are you scared to break away from this ridiculous thing called Christianity because you might be ostracized? Oh my goodness, you might be not a Christian anymore. You're going to go against what your family's traditions are, your church traditions are. You're going to be an outcast. You're going to cause people to dislike you because you're so involved in appeasing mankind, you'll never appease God in any way, shape, or form by taking a stand against the wickedness of the spiritual wickedness in high places, the principalities, the dark rulers of the darkness of this world, you will never take a stand against. You want to go along with mainstream because it's a lot easier to go downstream and just use your paddle as a guide than to try to go upstream against the current, using your paddle as a form of survival. I want you to think about that, ladies and gentlemen, because this is real. This is more real than what you even think it is, because this is going to have eternal consequences. This will bring down your civilization, your world, your country as you know it now. It will bring it down. Mark my words. It's happening already. and It will continue to happen. And it'll be wars that are going to be fought in the flesh, of course, just like they are today. It's all vanity. You can take whatever side you want. You can plead whatever you want for your ideologies that you justify your stance and your belief and your opinion and whatever else it has and whatever party you follow. Go ahead. Even use your religion. And it's going to get you nowhere. Because you're not fighting the real fight. You're not fighting the real war. You're blinded because you're lost and you're held captive by Satan in your religion of Christianity, under the yoke of bondage, because it's law and grace that motivates you to believe the lie of Satan, who is now the transformed himself into the angel of light for you in your Christianity religion as Christians, following the Jesus Christ of Christianity and listening, listening to the ministers of righteousness that are of Satan, your Christian ministers. I hope you have a nice day the next time you go to your Sunday worship service and listen to your Christian pastor. You can be freed from all this. You can have the truth of the word of God. You can have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, to fight this battle. Because Jesus Christ is more than victorious. We will be more than conquerors in Christ for what he has done and what's coming down the pike. This is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 4. This is the gospel that can save you by grace through faith. The finished work of the cross of Jesus Christ that he poured out for you over 2,000 years ago. Verse 1 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I have preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory that word which I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Verse 3, For I delivered first of all unto you that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures. And verse 4, And that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. And you believe that by faith and faith alone, because Jesus Christ did all the work for you. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 8, it says, By grace are ye saved through faith, yet not of yourselves. It's a gift of God. In verse 9, not of works, lest any man should boast. You will be able to accept the free gifts of the Spirit of God that are given to you freely now, because you are of the Spirit of God. The Spirit of Jesus Christ dwells within you. Your spirit is made alive, and your spirit is hid with Jesus Christ in God, in heaven, right now. You receive the atonement. 
and you are now not speaking things in the wisdom that man teaches, but that the Holy Ghost teaches. You compare spiritual things to spiritual because you're saved, not like the natural man, because unto them it is foolishness. They cannot understand it, nor can they receive it because it is spiritually discerned to them. Please read 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 12, 13, and 14. This will explain it from Jesus Christ's words to you why it is. Those of us that are saved by the gospel of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which is Paul's gospel. In the doctrine for the body of Christ church, in the dispensation of the grace of God that we live in, that is found in Romans through Philemon. We now have that. And those are the free gifts that we can have. You see, ladies and gentlemen, it's imperative. It is the difference between life and death. Because the Christianity religion that you belong to, the Christianity uh, that you believe and you listen to, the Jesus Christ of Christianity, who is actually the Satan transforming himself into the angel of light, and listening to the preachers of Christianity who are really his ministers of righteousness, you will be told a lie over and over and over again. You will be told a big lie. It'll mix in a little bit of truth of the gospel, but any time you put a little bit of truth in with a lie, what does it become? It becomes a lie. What happens if you have truth and put a little bit of a lie in it? What has become a lie? That's the power of a lie. And in truth, there is no lie. See, if it's truth in the word of God, if it's the truth from the Jesus Christ of Scripture, there is no lies in it. It cannot contain lies. Did you know that? Take heed, ladies and gentlemen. This is one of the greatest abominations coming down the pike. And it's going to have ramifications beyond whatever horrific thing your finite mind and finite wisdom can come up with. You think it's heinous now. You ain't seen nothing yet. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate you listening. This is a home Bible study. From my home to your home, this is Robert Holler. Thank you. And if there is a next time, and I hope there is, let's make it time for Jesus Christ.